How are you doing everyone? Obviously this is a different intro. I'm currently stood in a field in Somerset flying a drone. Voila! I just thought I'd introduce you the new part to my channel. As you know by now I like to move things on, improve things, so I've decided to buy myself a drone. My wife and I have been out having lessons recently and now I can actually fly this thing. So there you go, there's a drone. I don't want any of you to worry, it's not gonna ruin my channel. I'm just gonna use it probably for 20, 30 seconds or maybe a minute in every video where we've got a lovely sunset or I'm landing a nice fish or a nice casting shot. But look, I hope you'd agree, it should become a nice asset and we'll look forward to using it. See you later. Yeah. Target tonight? Flounder. Not a halibut. No, definitely not an halibut. Like a halibut. Like a halibut. But yeah, we're in Pool Harbour and we're fishing for flounder. It's no secret, it's probably one of the best waters in the country for big flounders. Yeah, well, well, in the past it was well renowned, but I think in the recent years with all the netting and what's going on in here, it's like they decreased on the big ones. Yeah. Um, but you still get a, you know, a lot of flounder in here. But it's nice to see this many this year. It's good. Yeah, it's really it's good. good fun. Obviously, when we're out in Norway, we fish really heavy. Yeah. Seven ounce grip leads, yeah. Whole mackerel, which people love the way we just <laughs> yeah. keep fishing with that and popping yeah. them out. Yeah, yeah. Today we've got really lightweight stuff. Yeah, so young sled. Three, I've got one ounce ball lead on. But what we're going to do tonight, obviously, it's dark, so we're not really going to go over all our kit. No. We can't really do that. We'll talk you through it briefly. We'll show you the best we can. It's a little bit different at night. Yeah. Um, tomorrow, I've got another guest with me as well. We've got Steve Perry with us, haven't we? Legend, legend. Yeah, Steve is a legend. I know I've told you all before. He's my good friend, along with Stu. And uh, me and Steve have been friends for a long time. And he's helped me out and taught me a lot about fishing. Yeah, he's good. He's really um, good. Like we all help each other out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But Steve is awesome. Just like that, Steve Perry. How you doing, guys? How you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, very good, mate. Nice to um, finally go out for a session with you. It's been a while. Yeah, I was That's just saying, nice. well, over the... Well, it's been a few weeks now. I keep saying on my videos, we're going to get out with Steve. Yeah. We're going to get out. We've had loads planned, haven't we? Loads planned, but weather's been hindering everything. But at least yeah. we've got some nice cold weather now. Perfect for floundering anyway. Yeah, Perfect. and obviously, for people who don't know, Steve, you're a bait digger. Sure am. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's very good at it. We'll show you some of his bait in a minute. You supply a lot of tackle shops, don't you, in the area? Yeah, I supply a few around local and obviously do private orders and stuff as well when, you know, sort of friends and acquaintances yeah. want it. Try, you know, best quality I can. Yeah, so if the shops are ever out, obviously go to your local shop or wherever you get your bait from. If you're struggling, give Steve a shout. Yeah. yeah. There's a little advert there, yeah, it's good. Oh, oh yeah, it works. Yeah, I'll give us a hand holding this up. The, this on. one's like a flounder, but just, but just small. smaller. <laughs> but there you go. Target species <laughs> straight off. There you go, what well, you're seeing better now, the white side. Yeah. Massive. <laughs> but Target look. species though, mate, eh? Probably like a lot of you, you probably know that me and <clears throat> Steve fish quite a lot. Um, but it's the same for us. When we got here this evening, Steve said to me, I don't care if we get one each. Yeah, target and species at the end of the day. That's and you know all you're doing that matters, it right. Mate. It's all that matters. So it's working. Yeah. Um, as I've said when we were talking to Stu, tonight's just a little bit of a couple of hours. We're yeah. not really going to go into it. We'll just yeah, hopefully yeah, yeah. get a few bites. And then tomorrow we're going to go out and hopefully do a full flounder session hopefully. on camera. Frosty puddles. Be nice. There you go. A pool harbour. Flounder. It's been pretty hard, but it's okay. Like we said, tomorrow we're getting out and we're going to try a different venue, but for some reason it's fishing, the flounders haven't turned up. But what I'm going to do is unhook this one, get it straight back, but I'm on the fish. Steve's had one, I've had one. We've got about an hour left. It's gone midnight, it's pretty cold. Sometimes, from time to time in the summer, we've caught flounders when they're pretty much out of season on the spinning gear. So it's a little bit different. The last few days I've been flounder fishing in Paul Harbour, pretty much standard flounder fishing, and we've managed to get a few. But today we're going to come out and do something totally different. If you've got a couple of hours in the evening and you like your spinning, 
take yeah. it away, Tom. Absolutely. Well, no, I mean, it's exactly what Wayne said. We are using the same gear as we were spinning for mullet. Um, actually, it's a slight lie. I've gone for slightly bigger hooks. I've gone from sixes to fours because I've gone slightly bigger worm. Yeah. I'm going after flounders. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to keep mobile, keep moving, which this time of year when it's minus 6,000 degrees is quite a bonus thing. Yeah. What we can see, we've got, we're surrounded by a bit of frozen mist. Um, we've been walking through crunchy puddles on the way in. I mean, it is stunning, it's beautiful, but it is cold. Um, so sat there still for three hours on end. <sighs> Sounds hard work. At yeah. least with this, you're moving. Yeah, I pretty much fished last night and my rods froze to my rest. And that's no exaggeration. Yes. I actually filmed it, so you might have watched that video. I'm not sure if I put it out yet, but that's a good one as well. But today we're going to get in, stay mobile. We've only got a few hours. Yep. So we're going to fish the right time of the tide, which is up. Yeah, so we've just got sort of just top of tide, which it is now is nice and still and settled. Then it'll start running off. Um, and my theory on that is, well, I'm hoping it's the same as when I'm mulleting. I love the runoff when we're mulleting. Um, it just gets that spinner working much easier. It's as yeah. simple as that, really. But that's fishy. Morning. Anyway, we're going to get at it. I'm going to film Tom. He's going to film me. Hopefully we get a few takes on camera. That'd be awesome. And we could catch a beautiful Dorset flounder on the spinner. As you can see, Tom's already fishing. See, Tom's actually filming himself as well, so we try not to disturb him. But we've got some visitors already. It's just very misty. It's very cold, but it's absolutely beautiful. What I'm going to do now is set up my spinning rod bring you back, talk you through my techniques, my plans and hopes for today's session. I'm sure if you've seen my videos down here before, you're aware that we use ragworm for bait, for the mullet, and we are today for the flounders. Luckily I'm with Tom, he owns his own tackle shop, so we've got a nice selection of small ragworm. If you use big fat ragworm, two long ones, it twists up and get tangled. It's an absolute nightmare. I'll just quickly run over my rig for you. So I've just got my FG knot that I've just tied, which is nice, to my fluorocarbon leader, to my size five map, which we've changed to make it a spinner, which we use for the flounder, which we also use for the fin lips, which you would have seen before. It's a panel situation, so I've got a hook up there to keep the worm straight, and then a hook just on the bottom. But I think you've seen that before. I'm going to get fishing. Hopefully, we can get a few bites on camera. Right, so what I'm going to do is try and show you the spinner working in the water. And there you go. Just going to flick it in front of you. As you can see, plenty of disturbance. With that nice ragworm following on behind. As you can see, I've got my waders on, naturally. I'm not going to be down here in my shorts this time of year, like I am in the summer. I mainly wear waders anyway. Just a little tip for you. If you come down here and do this in the summer, or wherever you do it, and you wear shorts, you get bit to pieces by midges. They just seem to hover above the water and everything wants to eat you. But this water is absolutely freezing. But as we've mentioned, it's cold. Last night was minus six, but here we go. Just simple stuff. Stop it before it hits the water. Just to straighten out the rig, make sure the worms, it's gentle, just wind. I almost perked it then, like Norway. But yeah, just nice and gentle. Got to create a commotion in the water and if a flounder comes along and sees that worm, he's going to nail it, hopefully. But look at that spinner, and you can hear it. There we go. The good thing about fishing like this, firstly, you're mobile. Secondly, you can cover a lot of ground. So what I do, I probably have five or six casts in every area, cover the ground, vary my speeds, 
Naturally, the higher up you got it and the faster you reel or retrieve, the higher up in the water you're going to be. There's not that many snags here, but for me, if I'm fishing for flounder, probably have it a lot slower and take the chance of bouncing it along the bottom. Like all law and spinner fishing, make sure you give a little wiggle in front of you. But the water's so clear, if I have a flounder follow, I'll be able to see it. I'm just going to keep going. A few more casts. This water is absolutely freezing. But yeah. We don't really anticipate there being multiple flounders in this area. Not like the mullet. Flounders don't really shoal up. They just sit in ambush prey as they go by. So I'm gonna stay mobile and cover lots of areas. The more ground I cover, the more chance I've got of getting a flounder. And because they're actually ferocious and a predator, if you don't get them on the first or second pull through, there's not likely to be a flounder there. Pretty much like all predators, if you're gonna fish an area, you normally get them on the first or second cast. Just to show you how cold it is. Ice. It's freezing. It's winter fishing at its finest. Flounder fishing. It's normally freezing, frosty. You can't beat these conditions for a flounder. Anyway, back to the fishing. It's cold, everyone. A nice wind as well. You can't really pick it up on camera, I shouldn't have thought. It's just a gentle breeze, but it's freezing. <laughs> but beautiful as well. I'll make sure my worm's nice and straight. So I'm trying to think really, the places where we normally pick up the mullet. Obviously it's a totally different species. But I should imagine, the flounders can be sitting in the same sorts of area. I've just got a feeling that if we banked it along the bottom, create a disturbance, we've got a chance. But we've had them in the summer, which is annoying when you're fishing for mullet. And they're normally lean and spent. If you get one this time of year, as we've seen in my pool videos, it'd be over two pint, which is fabulous. Oh, I literally spend my life freezing at the moment. And today is no different. Roll on the spring. When we're on chisel, we're getting into some place. The sun's shining in the shelter. Got the jet boil on the go. We're having a brew and we're nice and warm. But for now, it's winter and it's lovely. When I mullet fish, I have it right up. Just trying to keep this a little bit deeper and to wind a little bit slower. But I'm sure you can pick it up on camera. The water's starting to go out now. So it's coming from right to left. We've got plenty of movement, which is great for me, spinning. Got lots of resistance. And I can work the map the way I want it. Come on. It's starting to rip out now. Stuck in a 
bottom man. Just trying to. Ah, I got a branch. Anyway, I'll stay mobile. That's it now. That's the B roll. That's the footage. If we don't get any bikes, I'll bring you back at the end. I'll apologise as per normal and move on to the next session. So if you had to sum it up with an object, how'd you say it went? Well, today? Yeah. Poo. Mm. Horse. Yeah. Never mind. But we've had a great time. We've got out fishing together. If we say today, the two hours we manned it up. Yeah. <laughs> and that, you know, two hours today is like 97 hours in the summer. Yeah. It is that cold. In, it's term, in terms of freezing. manning it up this. It's really cold. We've got the freezing fog. Um, and we've given it a go, haven't we? We have. Oh, I've, I've enjoyed it. Actually, it's nice to get out. Nice to get out um, in this venue. I love this venue. Um, but again, you can try this anywhere. Any estuary, harbour, anywhere really. Um, and you can have excellent results like we've had. Yeah, a lot of people drop shot for them, spoon for them. It's been around for a long time. We're not yes. reinventing the wheel. Nope. We've just caught flounders here when we've been mullet fishing. So we took a chance, a couple of hours, but it's absolutely void of life. It is so, there's just no, no tiny bass, no anything. Even little flounders you normally see when you're wading around. Um, I think all that f heavy flooding we've had in the rivers and the harbours the last couple of weeks has probably pushed everything much further down. Yeah. That's a good excuse. So we're going to go back to the shop now. Yeah, we're going to go warm up, cup of tea. Warm up. Um, obviously, we still put this video up. If you've just watched it, you obviously know that by now. Because it's real fishing and we're just mates getting out, trying something different. Yep. And maybe you can give it a go. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, Tom. No worries, man. See you later. Cheers. How you doing, everyone? And welcome back. Welcome back to Paul Harbour. Actually, welcome back to Holes Bay. As you've seen in a previous video, Steve Perry and I were down here, just to the right up there, and we got into a lovely flounder. Well, Steve did, but obviously it's a joint effort. When we go out together and we're specimen hunting, probably like a lot of you, we don't really care who catches. We come up with a plan together and it worked. It was one ounce off a specimen. And as I said at the time, it's probably the biggest flounder that I've heard of in this winter period come out of this harbour. You may know otherwise, you may have caught a bigger one yourself, but I don't know about it. So until that point, it's the biggest one that's come out. But we don't really care. We put in the effort, probably like a lot of you, and it paid off. So today, obviously you've seen, I was a guest on Tom Bagnall, Christchurch Angling Centre YouTube, and we went out and done a little bit of spinning for flounders. I almost said mullet then, because that's what we normally do. But we spun up, as you've just seen, for some flounders. I had one follow, probably from a pike, or maybe a sea trout, but no flounders wanted to take our maps. So I've hung around today, I've worked from my van, and I'm back out. I am literally fishing in Holes Bay. It's a famous marking pool. For me, this is probably one of the last days of the flounder season. There was a match last night with 50 odd people fishing and only three flounders got caught. Is that an issue? Is it a problem? I don't know. Can they all fish? Can they all fish well enough to catch a flounder? Can I fish well enough? Who knows, but I'm here, I'm gonna give it a go and I'm on my own. So this evening, it's now nine o'clock. Oh, I've got a slack line on that one. It's now nine o'clock, high water is half past 11, first high, second one will be about one o'clock maybe. So I could actually fish here till four o'clock in the morning. I'm not sure if I'm going to, obviously I'm on my own. As you know, I'm scared of the dark. I'm not really, but sometimes it's just a bit eerie to spend your whole night on your own. Luckily, it's not minus six like last time, but there's a little bit of rain in the air, but we've got a chance. So my name's Wayne, as you know by now. This is Paul Harbour. I'm out on my own flounder fishing, and hopefully I can get a specimen flounder for us. I don't really need to go over my rigs. You know all about it by now. I'm just using the earth rigs with ragworm popped up off of the bottom and hopefully I can get one of these pool flounders before they go off 
to pastures new for the summer, but you never know. As you've seen with Steve, if you get one, it's normally a good one. So I've got hope. So I'm willing to put the effort in to try and get myself and us a nice flounder. Thanks again for joining me. I really appreciate you watching my videos, as you know, and it's just, it's what I do. So thanks for watching. Thanks for getting involved. Thanks for enjoying them. If you didn't enjoy them, I wouldn't do them. So here we are. Hopefully, as per normal, you can get a few bikes on camera, get into the action, and hopefully, as I've said, get us a flounder. Tide's running quite well now. I've got a two ounce ball lead on both of them. Last time I was down here, didn't move. Now they're trotting lovely down tide, just what I want. Hopefully they can trot into a little ravine or a little area which can hold up some flounders. That's what I'm hoping, but what I'm gonna do is the first cast, when I bring them in, I'm gonna up the weight size, slow my drift, and you never know, we might get into one of those beautiful flounders. I've said flounders about eight times, so you know what we're fishing for, all right? As you can see, I'm not on my own this evening. I've got my van there, and there's lots of cars. So if you ever come down to Holes Bay, just bear in mind, this is a cycle path. Not a psychopath, a cycle path. And it's full of people in Lycra, and they like to go really fast, and they generally don't like us. And I mean everyone else, not just fishermen. Obviously you've got the cars coming up there. It's not really a pleasant place to fish, but it's a famous place. Some very, very big flounders have come out of this area over time. And I've had a few myself. So we've got a chance. As I said earlier, or in the intro, 50 people fished a match last night and there was only three flounders caught. That was the other side of the harbour. So yet again, my way of thinking is, are the flounders this side? I don't really know, but I'm willing to give it a go. As I've said, I've got my van there. So I'm like a carp angler tonight. I'm gonna sit in my van, I'm gonna eat some food, and every now and again, I'm gonna look up, and I'm gonna shine my headlamp on my rods. And if I've got a fish, I'll come out, we'll light it up, and we'll have a go. But for now, I'm going to bait up a spare trace. I'm going to sit back, listen to the football, and hopefully we can get into a few fish. As you can probably see, my left one's gone slack. I've got a bass, I think. I've had two or three bites now from bass. One of them nearly took the rod out of the rest. But yeah, we're going to a fish. It's definitely not a flounder. I had a hell of a bite just a minute ago, just hoping it was a schoolie and not a flounder. Here's a bass. It's definite schooly, I think. Oh yeah. And there we are. Beautiful little school bass. Just as expected. And there we are. Nice little school bass. I just sort this little chap out. But yeah, there's plenty of fish out there this evening. Change of conditions. It's not as cold as last time. We've got a little bit of wind. It's a different tide, so you never know. We've got a chance. So if you watch my right hand rod, one of a bass, there you go. There's loads of bass this evening. Getting a bite every cast. But I don't want to pick it up yet, just in case it's a flounder. It doesn't look like one. I'll just let it do its thing. There you go, that's bass. <laughs> it's more like a flounder. Could be a flounder. So my rod's gone round and stayed round. I think I'm into a flounder. I'm gonna take my time. Feels like a flounder. Right, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm gonna walk down with this fish. Feels like a flounder. 
definite flinder. Right. Sorry about this, I've just gone down on the rocks on my own. I don't want to lose this fish. I take my time. Feels a good fish. Just got to get it up off the bottom. I'm sorry you can't see me. Just excited about this one. Come on. This is the worst thing about fishing on your own. When you hook a decent fish. Come on, please. Don't come off. Don't come off. Oh. Don't come off. Oh no! Oh, is it ill? You bitch! Oh, you little dick! Oh man, I was so excited about that. I thought it was a flounder. Oh, it was a totally different bite to a bass. And it's that snotty thing. Yeah. Look, it's a fish. I'm definitely not kissing that, by the way. But it's not, oh, thanks. Look at that, yeah. Anyway, that's an eel. It's not a flounder, but I'm getting bites every cast. So if I keep going, hopefully we can get one of those specimen Pool Harbour, a legendary big fat boys, or maybe girls, flounder.